This is how to know if a girl is worth taking serious. And I have a whiteboard here, so you know this is professional shit. And I have a suit jacket on. Why do I have a suit jacket on? I don't know, but I'm going to take it off. Also, this video is completely unscripted. I'm not like Iron Man Gazi. I don't need a script. So the first one is called the after hanging test. But this test only works if you make a move during the date. So this is how this works. You're going to go out with a girl. You're going to take her out on a date, you know, the beach, dinner, lunch, whatever. Then at the end of the date, you have to kiss her. If you don't kiss her, this test is going to fail. You have to make a move. You and her have to do something. You have to kiss or do whatever you do. If it's a one-night stand, whatever. But you have to do something. This is why. Because after the date... You're going to go and you're not going to text her at all. You're going to wait for her to text you. And she's going to have to text you something like, oh, had fun on the date. Uh, last night was amazing or some shit like that. And if she doesn't text you anything like that, this, that, that, that means that she has an ego. And her ego is too ignorant to let her make the first move on texting and saying, hey, had a wonderful time. I want to see you again. Something like that. Because you don't want to be with a girl that won't text you in the first place. Because if she has such a high ego that she won't text you, hey, had a lot of fun, I want to see you again or something like that, then she's not worth your time because you already know that relationship is going to be horrible because her ego is so high. And the reason this test only works if you two do something is because if you just go hang out with a date and you just talk and then you leave, she doesn't really have to text you. But if you guys do something like kiss or whatever, now she has to text you or else she just looks like, you know, a slag. The next one is how she texts. If she's texting you all dry and stuff like that, and she's not worried about you at all, that's not the girl you want to take serious. You want to, The girl you want to take serious is the one who's blowing up your phone, wondering where you are, what you're doing, stuff like that. I'll give an example. I, I went out with a girl. We spent about a week together. She came here on vacation, and I, we went out like three different times. We hooked up on the beat, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But she is now blowing up my phone. She's like, what are you doing? Don't, don't be head out, hanging out with any other girls. Uh, wh 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 where's your snap location? Stuff like that. That's the girl you want to take serious. A girl, say you just hook up with a girl and then she passed this test. So you're good. You're like, oh yeah, she passed this test. But she's not blowing up your phone asking you, oh, are you hanging with any other girls or something like that? that then, then she failed this test and you don't want to take her serious. Because if she isn't blowing up your phone... That means that she really doesn't care about you. Or maybe she's like one of those girls that just is like quiet or whatever. And you don't want to take a girl like that serious. The last thing that you want is a girl who says, I'm a bad texter. No girl's a bad texter. She just doesn't care about you. Oh, well, I wasn't on my phone. She is on her phone. Girls are on their phone every five minutes. And then fuck that. Every 30 seconds, a chick's on her phone. Her phone's always in her pocket. She sees you texting her. She just doesn't want to respond. So if your girl's taking three, four, five, six hours to respond, GTB. You know what GTB means? GTB means ghost that bitch. So ghost her. Don't talk to her anymore because she failed this test. You need a girl that's blowing up your phone because that shows that she cares about you. If you guys are one of those guys who's like, I hate it when a girl blows up my phone. That's the energy you need. You need a girl blowing up your phone if you're going to take her serious. A girl who's not blowing up your phone and isn't spamming you with messages doesn't care about you. So, GT beer. The next one is if she wants kids. And a lot of guys will say, bro, I'm not going to ask her that. Ask her this shit on the first date. I'm not even joking. Me and my brother have an argument because my brother says do Zerka mode the first date. If you guys don't know who Zerka is, he's some, I don't even know. I don't even know how to describe him. He's like some, I don't know. But he, Zerka's method is you want to act like their big, bluff, their big brother and make them play around with you and kind of bully them on the first date. And then after acting like Zerka for a month or a few months, then you go into dad mode and you start laying boundaries. I am the complete opposite because Zerka mode fails with my brother every single time because he can never take a girl serious because he doesn't go into dad mode first. I'm going to explain what dad mode is. Dad mode is when you ask questions like this and you set your boundaries. By the first or second date, girls already know my boundaries. No guy friends, no going out to parties and clubs and things like that. And I already know if she wants kids or not. Because what is the point in marriage if you're not going to have kids? Well, I want to be in love. I understand that, fair enough, but the whole point, I think, of life is to have kids. So if a girl is unsure about having kids or she doesn't want to have kids, why are you taking her serious? Especially because I know most men nowadays want a son or want a daughter, they want kids. So why would you date a chick that doesn't want kids if you want kids? It doesn't mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Because I think somewhere in the Bible it says, don't be like unequally yoked. And to a degree, that means religious part. But also to a degree, I believe that that means if you guys have different values and different goals in life, then why are you dating them? So if your goal is to have kids, then 
why are you dating a chick that doesn't want kids? And this point could be extrapolated out into so many other points because if, if she wants kids, that probably means she's going to be a good mother and that means she's like a feminine woman because a woman that doesn't want kids is probably some woman that's only focused on her career and stuff like that. Do you want to date a woman that's only focused on her, on her career and not wants kids? Probably not. Because 29% of nurses cheat. Almost every girl that's employed, I think it's like 25% of women that have a career cheat. So do you want a woman with a career? Probably not. Now, the next one is controversial, but I believe this applies for atheists as well. If she is religious, she has to be religious. I'm going to explain this point. If she isn't religious, what is stopping her from cheating on you? Because I know if a woman is extremely religious, even if her love for even if her love for me isn't stopping her from cheating on me, God will because she will too, she will feel too bad to cheat on me because she loves God. And if she loves God more than she loves me, perfect. That's exactly the way I want it. But she will never cheat on me because she's afraid of God. She's a God fearing woman. So even if you're an atheist, still date a religious girl. Now, if she's truly religious, I doubt she'll date you. But you can still try because a religious girl is most likely not going to cheat on you. And if a, if a religious girl does cheat, like you can say, well, bro, I, some chick in my church cheated on her husband. Then is she truly religious? Probably not. So always focus on a religious woman. And also a truly religious woman is going to be in her feminine. A religious girl will always be in her feminine because every single book, it doesn't matter if it's the Quran or Bible, or whatever. I'm per, I, me personally, I go for the Bible. I'm, I'm Christian and I have a relationship with Jesus. But in the Bible, it lays out the rules for women and it lays out the rules for men. It, it, it's kind of more traditional. And if you want a traditional woman, not some woke American shit, then you need to make sure she's religious and extremely religious. The last one is, can she cook? Because too many women nowadays cannot cook. I was dating with this one girl. She was my ex-girlfriend. I, we dated for like three or four months. And I should have known. I should have never dated her. Because she, I asked her, what, 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 what meals do you cook? Well, I cook mac and cheese. And sometimes I make the little bread with cheese in between. I'm like, what the fuck? She's like, yeah, that's all I know how to make. I don't know how to cook. That should have been my first red flag on dating her. And she wasn't really that religious. So those two red flags, boom, should have snapped. Because why would you want a girl that only knows how to make mac and cheese? I want a girl, I'm not joking, literally two days ago, this girl says, I live so I can cook for you. I was like, Ugh. I'll show you the text. Yeah, I live for the day I get to cook for you. That is the type of energy I'm talking about. That's what a guy wants. A guy doesn't want some chick that goes, I can make mac and cheese. What the fuck? What, what? Mac and cheese ain't gonna fuel my muscles. So that is very important point. And it's not, it's not something that like, oh, women should cook because I cook all my meals right now. I live in an apartment and I cook all my meal prep, but it would just be so much easier if I had a helper that would help cook me meals. I'll be her helper by giving her this whole apartment and my car and all that shit for free. So why can't she be my helper and just make me my meal prep for work? So it's nothing to do with, with men and women and oh, I'm sexist and all that. It's nothing to do with that. It's just, can she cook? Because I can cook. I can cook damn good. So it, this doesn't matter. It's not one of those things. I just want to help her. So make sure if you want to help her that she can cook. So if a girl meets all five of these things, that's the woman you should take serious. And if a girl doesn't, you can still go on dates with her and hang out with her, but don't take her serious. And here's the thing. You might think, well, bro, no girls meeting those, all those requirements here. And I'm going to tell you right now, I went on dates for the last two weeks. I've probably gone on 10 different dates and only two of them met all these requirements, but they are out there. They're out there. So just don't, don't give up. You need to go on dates with a whole bunch of girls before you're going to find a few that actually meet these requirements.